Hey everybody, it's Ricky Heller here from RickyHeller.com. I'm a book editor and writing coach and I help you write your book and get it out into the world in your own voice. So one of the things that a lot of people talk to me about is this sense of feeling like they may not have something that's big enough to say to the world or valuable enough to say to the world. And I definitely understand that feeling. This is how I felt for sure before I started writing my PhD thesis, my first book, my second book, my third book, my fourth book. Um, but the thing is, we underestimate the impact that we can have on people. And you don't have to be some kind of massive worldwide name to really have an impact on people. So I want to tell you two things that sort of switched my viewpoint in this area and that helped me to understand how really each of us can have a really significant impact on people. And it doesn't have to be something that is massive worldwide with a huge platform to really make a difference in somebody's life. <clears throat> so when I was um, studying my master's degree at the University of Windsor, I was asked to do a talk um, as a TA teaching assistant, and I was really nervous. There was another TA who I was friendly with who was kind of going the week before me. And I'll never forget sitting in on the class where she taught her lesson. So we were both kind of uh, leading up to this point. We were discussing our prep and we were both preparing a particular lecture. That was all fine and good. And we were both really nervous about talking in front of a class. And she was kind of a shy, quiet person, but she was determined to do this. So she went up and she stood in front of the class and she said, hello, and her name. And then she kind of blanched. She looked really pale and she fainted. She literally crumpled onto the floor and fainted completely unconscious. And people were gasping. They, first, they thought she might have been kidding. So she kind of woke up a few seconds after she hit the floor. She seemed to be okay. We were all really worried and thought, you know, okay, well, she's going to have to go to the doctor or something. What happened was she, you know, we asked her, are you okay? She said, yes. She kind of looked around, got her bearings, stood up and kept talking. And she delivered her lecture. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, the courage to do that. She just barreled on through. And of course, it wasn't a great lecture. She was still nervous and she had just fainted. She was embarrassed. All of this didn't have the greatest audience um, reaction at that point. But she went on and did it. And then years later, I found out that she was a full professor at a pretty prestigious university. So she kind of pushed herself through kept going and that's what happened. Now, the point of the story isn't that she did this. That's very impressive and inspiring and all those things. The point of the story is here I am almost 40 years later and I remember that. She had such an impression on me and that lesson from her is something I've taken with me over the years. And every time I feel like maybe I can't do something, I think of her and I think if she could get up after fainting in front of that class and keep talking, I can do whatever it is I'm afraid to do, right? So don't ever underestimate how much of an impact you might have on other people. Something that you brush under the rug or doesn't seem all that great to you could truly, truly affect somebody else for 40 years later and help them to move through their own career or their own life in a different way. And I think that's where we get bogged down is that we don't understand that it can be something small like that. So the second thing that really impacted me in this area is a talk I had with my mentor at the time. I had been uh, thinking about starting to send out articles for publication. This is what professors did, all my professors who were role models. I was just a lowly master student and master students didn't get you know, articles published. But um, my mentor was encouraging me to send it out. I was saying, you know, who am I? What have I got to say? And he talked about the difference between art and craft. And so art is the genius that we think of. It is the Picasso, the Shakespeare, the Meryl Streep, right? The people that will, whose work will reach the, the most of the world and will last through the ages. 
However, as he pointed out, craft is equally important because craft is the work that we all do and that we all perfect through our lives. The ability to create something sturdy and useful that the average person makes use of. So it's the difference between Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water, beautiful home that's a piece of art, and the house that your great, great, great grandparents lived in that maybe your great, great, great grandfather built with his own two hands, that probably is still standing somewhere if they haven't torn it down, that housed people through generations and sheltered people and gave them a sense of community and family got together in it. It was something that had meaning in people's lives. And that's craft. It wasn't a necessarily a beautiful home. It wasn't necessarily a huge home. It wasn't necessarily a, you know, a history changing home, but it was for the people who lived in it. And all of the successive generations that lived in it got something really valuable out of that. And that is what your writing can do. Your book can be your personal message, your personal ideas, your personal story that can then impact people beyond just you and your circle. And you will be surprised that there might be someone who reads your book in passing who remembers it 40 years down the road because it speaks to them and something is triggered in their mind and it changes the track of their life, which then impacts everybody they come into contact with and everybody they come into contact with and so on and so on. That ripple effect where you have now had an impact on many, many lives. And if you don't write that book, that will never happen, right? So if you're worried about, do I have something to say? That's something that I would love to help you with, help you come up with the topic that maybe you didn't even realize you had inside of you for a book that can then impact other people. If that's something you'd like to talk about, just um, sign up for a quick chat with me at rickyheller.com forward slash clarity. And we can have a talk about what your ideas are and how you can transform those into a book. You'll leave the talk knowing what your main topic is and where you can go from there. All right, everybody, I hope this was helpful. And um, if it is, please do leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Or if you have any questions, I will always come back and read them. And I will see you again next time. Take care.